uh, good morning to morning worship here with us at Trinity Baptist Church in Gorton in Manchester. My name is Wayne Clark. I'm the pastor here. My wife Val is going to be leading most of our service this morning, but I want to welcome you, welcome to members of Trinity Baptist Church and others uh, who are joining us on Facebook Live and those who will be watching this on YouTube. All our services and recordings and Bible studies are also uh, posted on YouTube on our Trinity Baptist Gorton YouTube channel. So please do have a look at those as well. If you're watching on Facebook Live or on YouTube, then you can put your comment here below the, um, the video that you're watching and uh, we'll be able to see what you're uh, commenting about and what you're contributing to the service as well. And we hope you're well and uh, joyful and keeping your hearts uh, to fixed on the Lord at this time. Uh, it can be a worrying time. It can be a time of concern for all of us. And uh, we want to each keep close to one another and keep close to the Lord at this time, at uh, this time that we call social isolation. We needn't be isolated because the Lord is with us and we want to be in fellowship with one another. So we welcome you. Let me begin with a, a short prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are with us even when we are alone, even when we are feeling frustrated, even when we are feeling fearful. We thank you that you are the God who keeps us strong, who keeps us close to you and to one another. We thank you that you are the God who never lets us down. Father God, hold us close now. Keep us close to your heart. Keep us close in fellowship with one another. And particularly as we gather together this morning, as people from different places, from different churches, from different communities and in different nations, we pray, Lord, that you will make us one in our gathering together that we may know that you are with us, our God, our Lord, our Master, our Saviour and our friend. We thank you that you have given us Jesus, who gives us hope, who gives us life, who points us to a greater reality than the one that we experience here and now. And we praise you for him. We thank you that together we can know your life, that we can know that you are with us always and will never leave us. We give you praise. Amen. So we want to give a special welcome to, uh, well, to everyone who's joining us this morning in whatever medium you're joining us, but a particular welcome this morning to Jim and Jan and Janelle Mulverhill, who are part of our church, but are serving the Lord in Belize. And we want to say hello to you, Jim and Jan and Janelle. Uh, it's early in the morning in Belize. Uh, it's not yet four o'clock in the morning. So uh, we're delighted that you've made this special effort to join us. But hello to you and to everyone who's watching. We'll have a chance uh, a bit later in our gathering to uh, mention by name some of those who are watching us on Facebook and some of those who are part of our fellowship in different ways. But for all who are with us, uh, welcome. It's good to be together this morning. Uh, as I say, Val is going to be leading us in most of our worship this morning. We're going to start, though, with a reading from the Psalms, from Psalm 46. And uh, on the way to handing over to Val, I'm going to first of all hand over to Rita, who's going to read Psalm 46 to us. So, Rita, oh, sit yourself down, Rita, with your Bible. That's it. And uh, it's good to have Rita and Noah with us. And uh, Rita's going to turn to Psalm 46. And it's going to read to us. I think you need to unmute yourself now, or I think you've just muted it. That's it. We can hear you now. Thank you, Rita. Okay. okay. Um, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though the waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, 
he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Thank you, Rita. Um, the God, or my, our God Almighty is with us. And um, in the midst of the nations being in uproar, we can know that God is with us. And we're gonna sing about his deep love for us now. Um, Stuart Tannen's lovely hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. You can either uh, sing along or you can just um, read the words and listen um, to th this account of God's amazing love for us. Thanks, Jeff. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns His face away As wounds which mar the Chosen One Bring many sons to glory sin upon his shoulders ashamed i hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was a
our God who is with us and who went through that for us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for your amazing love for us. We thank you that you promise that you will be with us even when um, the whole earth is in uproar. And Lord, at this time, we need, we need that promise. And we thank you that um, you sent Jesus to be our ransom, to die for us, to show your amazing love for us. Oh, Father, that is such an amazing thing. And we thank you and we praise you. And we just want to get ourselves in that place where um, we can really and truly appreciate that. And so we bring to you things that have, have got in our way of our relationship with you over the last few days. Things that, um, the thoughts that we've had, the words that we've said, the things that we've done that we know wouldn't please you and have maybe hurt others. When we've got frustrated from being in lockdown, when we've um, got scared, when we've, um, when we've been uncertain about things and we've lashed out, Lord, we just pray that you would um, forgive us for all our sins, as you promised to do. And because Jesus, we know that we are forgiven and we are redeemed and we thank you and praise you for that, Lord. Amen. Let's sing again. Or maybe just listen, because this song um, I don't think is particularly known to our church, although it has been on the church WhatsApp group um, within the last couple of weeks. Um, and I know it's one that um, is, has become very popular in, in churches just recently. Um, it's a, a song by a, a Nigerian worship leader called Sinash. And uh, this is her singing, um, her version of Waymaker. Um, if you don't know it, then just listen, um, be aware of the words um, and just, just let, let God uh, speak to you through it. Thank you. I worship you. 
Uh, great. Uh, I'm just going to hand over to Wayne now to um, do the notices. <laughs> oh dear, is it? Is that what we have to do? Even when we're um, even when we're in lockdown, we have to have the notices. I just want to see. Just don't, don't want to do this really as the notices, more just as a bit of fellowship building time, really, just to say hello to those who are, are watching us on Facebook as well as those who are on Zoom. On Zoom, we've got uh, Jam and Jill and Jeanette Mulverhill from Belize who have uh, joined us from, well, not quite the other side of the world, but a long distance away, and it's good to have you with us. Uh, we've also got uh, Noah and Rita and David Marie and uh, Janice and Eric and, and Carol, who's just disappeared out of shot, but she's there somewhere, and uh, lots of others. I can't flick through all my screens because I'm, I'm having to go through everyone there. But uh, everyone, everyone who's with us in Zoom, it's good to have you with us. Let me mention some of those who are on uh, who on or have been on Facebook. Um, Afia, hello, good to have you with us. Uh, Rita, Theophilia, um, Abby, it's good to have you with us, Abby. Uh, Kenny, uh, hi, Kenny, hope you're doing well. Uh, Rosetta, Elaine, Elaine, it's good to have you with us. Elaine, Rosetta, hi. Um, who else have I written down here? Uh, Chris, it's good to have you with us. Um, who else is on here? Let me just have a quick look at my phone, see if I can see any other names. Um, yeah, I think I've mentioned everyone who I can spot on there. There's always people that you don't quite spot those. It's good to have all those people joining us from all over the place, particularly from uh, Trinity Baptist Church in Gorton, but also from anyone else who's a part of another church, or if you're not part of a church this morning, then it's good that you can uh, uh, to have you joining our fellowship this morning we pray that you'll find peace in these troubled times and you'll find truth 
and grace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who welcomes all to come and join in the fellowship, whether we're in this sort of virtual world of watching on uh, social media or whether we can one day be together again physically. And we're all waiting to see what our prime minister is going to say this evening about maybe a timetable back towards meeting together. But of course, we're only going to do what's sensible and what will be for the good of others. It's not just about what we want to do. It's about caring for others in deciding how and when we can start meeting together. If you do have any particular needs or know of people in need, please do get in touch with me. Please let me know through a phone call or through our church Facebook page. I'm at Wayne Clark on Facebook or through uh, the contact page website, which is trinitybaptistgorton.org or any other way you can get in touch with me through um, uh, Twitter or anything else. Um, I, I welcome any any calls, any any way you want to let me know, particularly about people who you know uh, need, need uh, support or pastoral care or any practical help at this time. That's what we're here for. Just want to remind you also about some midweek opportunities for fellowship and for study and for being together in God's word. Uh, on Tuesday and Thursday on Facebook Live at 12 o'clock, I'm continuing with our live Bible studies on the book of Ruth. Uh, last Tuesday and Thursday, we did chapter one and then chapter two of the book of Ruth. So this coming Tuesday and Thursday, you can guess what we're going to do. We're going to do chapter three and then chapter four. No surprises there in the book of Ruth. That's 12 o'clock on Facebook Live. You can get to that through our Facebook page, Trinity Baptist Gorton, and then look at the Facebook uh, Live videos uh, and you'll find us popping up there. Uh, that's the book of Ruth. And then our, on Wednesday night, we have a, a Zoom Bible study each week. Uh, it starts for real at eight o'clock, but you can gather earlier from about half past seven. And that's on the same Zoom link that our Sunday service is on. We'll send you that if you haven't got it. And uh, Jeff leads that. And we're studying the book of Ephesians on Wednesday evenings uh, for an eight o'clock start uh, gathering before that, if you want to. A very quick word for Trinity Baptist people about uh, money. If you're not part of our church, then don't listen to this bit. If you have offering envelopes, please keep putting your money each week into your offering envelopes as the Lord guides you and keep them safe when we're back together. If you'd like to make a bank transfer to the church uh, weekly or uh, however you, you choose to do that, or if you'd like to set up a standing order to the church, to, to the church expenses are continuing even during lockdown then please let me know and we can help you with that. But that's uh, simply for those who are members or supporters of Trinity Baptist Church, not a, not a general appeal for money. But we do wish you well and thank you for being part of our fellowship here at Trinity Baptist Church. And with that, I'm going to hand back to Val, who's going to lead us through the rest of our gathering. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Wayne. Um, you didn't do a birthday check so i'm going to do that okay anybody um who's watching um or who's on zoom got a birthday this week or just had one hooray it's erica's birthday this week erica erica yeah. Yeah, she's erica. not gonna hide anymore <laughs> <laughs> yes, how old are you erica are you, are you going to smile now <laughs> Can't see you. Come in the picture. Hey, come on. Can you see her? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think it was Jonathan Lambert's birthday during the week. I know oh. he's on in the week, but I don't know if he's on today. Yeah. Right, I think he is, yes. So happy birthday, Erica. Happy Jonathan birthday, Jonathan. Birthday. Um, it's, uh, I, I know he's not on at the moment, but it's Noki's 18th birthday this coming week. Oh. Wednesday. Oh. So, um, we, 18 we on to... Wednesday, Noki. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And Dulcie. Dulcie as no. well. Mine is, Mine is next Monday, so it's not, it's not. It's not yet, yes, right? Bad right. And Barbara, I think. Is it, is it yeah. one of you been trying oh, to sing happy birthday? It's my birthday. No, it's not your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sing happy birthday to all these people. Yeah. Happy birthday. You lead us well. Yeah. 
Birthday. Um, Father God, we thank you for all these people and we pray your blessings on them um, as, as they. Amazing. We thank you and praise you for them and we, we pray that um, yeah, you would bless them, that they would um, go into this new year with hope in their hearts because they know and trust and love you. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to uh, read now from Corinthians, from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, um, and, uh, verses 2 to 11. Paul writes this, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it's for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favour granted us in answer to the prayers of many. It's as if Paul was writing now, isn't it? That God of all comfort is available to all of us. And our next hymn is um, just reiterates for all of us that we have a friend in Jesus. We do not care. 
their trouble anywhere. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrow share? lovely lovely hymn lovely way to remember that Jesus is always there for us you know I get really excited um, particularly at Christmas about one particular bit of theology um, and that's the theology of the incarnation Duh, what am I talking about that for when we're um, in the, the season between Easter and Pentecost? Because the fact that Jesus came to be with us, that God came to be with us, that Emmanuel is not just for Christmas, but for life. We tend to, to really emphasize at Christmas time, Emmanuel, God with us, but God is with us now. He's there in your home now with you as you're watching this. He's here with me in my home. He's in every home represented um, on Zoom and on Facebook this morning here with our church friends who aren't with us. He's in every other Facebook and Zoom meeting that's happening around the world today as Christians meet together. But he's, he's not just with us. He's there with those, whether they believe him in him or not, in whatever situation that people are in. He's in the the homes of, of all the people in my street. Um, he's in the care homes. He's in intensive care. He's in the government offices. 
is there with us all as we're clapping and banging and finding more and more ways to make lots of noise at eight o'clock on Thursdays. God is with us. Emmanuel, now. Wherever people are suffering, God is there. He's the God of all comfort. He comes alongside us in a way that no human being can, bringing comfort and peace and his loving, gentle touch. Even as people die, he is there. As people mourn, he weeps and grieves too. He understands completely Completely. He is not remote and distant. He is there right in the center of it. People are asking, people always ask, we're asking, how can God let this happen? Why didn't he stop it? Why isn't he seeming to answer my prayers, particularly for prayers for healing? And maybe even the question, why did my friend die? And to be honest, these are questions that people have been asking for, for centuries. And we don't know. We don't really know the answers. But what we do know is that God is God. What does he say in that psalm that Rita read? Be still and know that I'm God. He's the one in charge. He is God. He's the creator of all things. And one thing I've learned about God is that he doesn't tend to step in in big ways to sort out the big issues of this world. That's not really the way he works. Even when God came to be with us, he didn't do it in a big way. What he tends to do is to just get alongside people. It's like Jesus did as they struggle through life. And then in small, gentle, loving ways, person by person, God changes the world. God is God. He gave us life. And this life includes joys and sorrows, ups and downs, birth and death. The writer of Ecclesiastes wrote this. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. Time to plant and a time to uproot. Time to kill and a time to heal. Time to tear down and a time to build. Time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Time to search and a time to give up. Time to keep and a time to throw away. Time to tear, a time to mend. Time to be silent and a time to speak. Time to love and a time to hate. Time for war and a time for peace. And then just a few verses later, he says, he's made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. And those words are just so true, aren't they? I mean, how many of us are planting and, and wishing that we could reap quicker than, than things are coming up? Um, my... My niece has, has experimented 
um, in the last few weeks with um, growing things on her balcony. And um, she was digging up her onions to check that they were growing um, a couple of weeks ago. And we all had to tell her that she just had to leave them to get on with it. How many of you are learning to dance? And wishing that you could hug somebody. These words are timely. God has made a good and a perfect world with a time in it for everything. But we've messed it up and it no longer runs as God intended it to. But he's not abandoned us. He is still involved. He is still King and Lord and his plans will be fulfilled. But he won't force it. He works in and through individuals who've chosen to be his to change the world rather than through global or cosmic intervention. Emmanuel, God is here. He's with us. He cares for individuals. He brings comfort and help and peace. His amazing presence can be there if only we look for it. And all those things, even when we're in the valley of the shadow of death. The Bible contains wonderful examples of God's amazing loving kindness in action when people can genuinely say, God is with me. And I want to just look at some of those examples of people that maybe we don't or we almost don't notice some people a bit more prominent, but just to, to look at how God just comes alongside people sometimes. Do you remember Hagar, the slave girl of Abraham, um, uh, of Sarah's wife, uh, so Abraham's wife, Sarah, who was badly treated by Sarah um, after she'd become pregnant with Abraham's child? bit of a complicated story and if you want to read more it's in Genesis 16 uh, but at one point she ran away into the desert she just found out that she was pregnant and I think she was scared um, she didn't know her place within the family she ran away and God met her God met her as she sat by a little spring and he reassured her and he gave her hope and a reason to carry on. And she actually went back into the family of Abraham. She met God. God was with her. And somehow she was able to face the rest of her life. You remember that great prophet Elijah? He just shown the power of God over the, fo the false gods of Israel and he predicted the end of the famine that had been holding the land but then suddenly it all became too much for him and he ran off ran away feeling completely worthless and he was desperately afraid for his life because Ahab and Jezebel would were definitely uh, wanting to kill him And God came to him. He just ran and he ran and he ran. And then God came to him. And he made him go to sleep. And he, he slept, you know, one of those sleeps where you hardly notice that you're asleep. You don't wake up. You don't toss and turn. He just slept and he slept and he slept. And when he woke up, God provided food for him. And then he let him sleep again. And then when he was ready, God came and he met him in the most gentle of ways, a still small voice. And he reminded him that he wasn't alone and that God cared for him and that there were other people who could support and help him. God was with him. Do you remember the Shunammite woman um, that Elisha met? 
she provided for Elisha in the time of a famine and he and uh, she provided food and shelter for him and he um, told her that she would be able to now have a son and her and her husband had a, a little boy who tragically died but amazingly Elisha brought him back to life God had cared for her in so many different ways throughout her life and then there, I came across a passage the other day that really surprised me because God continued to care for her. That isn't the last we hear of her because Elisha was warning the king that there was a famine. And God told Elisha to go and warn the woman that there was a famine coming. And he said, tell her to leave the, the country until the famine's over. And so the woman left the country and when she came back, God managed to have it so that the king was reminded of her situation and he gave her back all the lands that she'd had to abandon when she left the country seven years previously. Amazing. God was with her. Or that other woman, an unnamed woman who dared to reach out to try to touch Jesus's clothes in the hope of being healed. A woman who suffered a condition that was debilitating, embarrassing and caused her to be socially shunned. A woman who'd spent years suffering at the hands of doctors and was now worse off. A woman who had exhausted all her money over many years in trying to get better. She just wanted to creep up and see if it worked. Could just touching him help her? Didn't want to disturb him or take up his time or even be noticed by him. But Jesus knew that power had gone out of him and he kept searching the crowd, looking for her until he found her. He wasn't prepared to just let her go. He wanted to be with her to speak to her, to reassure her, to heal her. God was with her. Or Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus hated by everybody because of his job. Laughed at because he was small. Hiding up in a tree because he wanted to see Jesus. But called down from his perch because Z Jesus wanted to have tea with him. God was with him. And God's with us. Whatever situation we're in. When we feel low, when we feel frightened, when we're alone, when others reject us, when life's a struggle, when we grieve, whatever we're feeling, good or bad, God is with us. He cares, he loves, he heals, he provides, he comforts, he grieves with us. He assures us, he encourages us. Sometimes he might chasten us or chivy us along, but he is with us. He is an ever-present help in trouble. And because God designed us to be relational people, mainly in relationship with him, that's what we were designed for. But he also puts other people in our lives as well. Elijah had to go and find Elisha, who became his follower and friend. The Shunammite woman was given a family. The woman who was bleeding was now acceptable to society. God gives us people too, our family and our friends, even if we're at a distance, our work colleagues, who we will work alongside again, our neighbours and our community, our church family. We will meet again. But let's, in the meantime, find creative and fun ways to be together now. God is with us. That's why we were made to be with him. And we need to seek him out if we, if 
we aren't spending time with him. If he isn't, if we're not acknowledging his presence, we need to find him and to enter into that relationship. And all we have to do is to call out to him and ask him. We need to find our place to make ourselves comfortable in the safe and loving arms of our Father. verse in Zephaniah that I love that says, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. In the safe and loving arms of our Father, who is with us always. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us. That you're with us whether we acknowledge you or not, but what you really want is for us to respond to you, to want to be with you. And we thank you for your promises that you're going to be with us through thick and thin. That in all the, the things that we're doing in life, you can be there alongside us. And we thank you that you are there alongside us now. We thank you that in this uncertain time, you can be our rock our stronghold, the arms in which we are embraced and held. We thank you, our Father, that we are Emmanuel, that you are Emmanuel, and we can know you with us at all times. Amen. We're coming to the end now of our, our Facebook um, time, uh, but be, as we as we get ready to um, sorry, as we get ready to to separate, what will happen is those people on Zoom will be um, going into groups to pray. Um, those of you on Facebook, we thank you for being with us. Um, but just before we go, before I I um, say a final prayer for us as you as you leave Facebook. I want us to, to listen to um, a song that was released uh, last Sunday, uh, which is a blessing for, um, no, blessing for anybody. Um, this has gone viral since it was released last week. Um, and we just thank God that um, this has been done and we pray that it would bless many people. So please uh, listen to this, sing along if you want to, um, share it if you want to, because um, this is for everybody. We just pray God's blessing on you and yours and the people that you love and on everybody. This is the UK blessing.
the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence may favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may favor be upon you and a thousand generations
Wonderful. Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And remember, he is with us. He is for us. Amen.